Hi, welcome to this introduction to Helios Part 2 video. In this video, I'll be cover, covering working with layers, bindings, profiles, and finally testing. Uh, one quick note about uh, something I mentioned in the, in the first video is about the background image and how you need to have cutouts. If I wasn't too clear on that, uh, I'll go over that really quickly. Uh, so basically, once you have your exports set up, they're going to look like something like this, and your arrangement will differ depending on uh, your screen size and location. But basically, you're just going to have uh, your viewports um, set up like this with your MFCDs and wherever your arrangement is. Now, if you're trying to use this like a real panel, uh, front panel, you're going to have them arranged um, where they would physically be in the cockpit. So I'm using Laz's SM version 2.1 profile. And so what he's done is he's made a, a a background plate that basically fits a 1920 by 1080 uh, monitor. So in order for me to use that, um, basically come over here to the properties down here and click on a blank area on the monitor one tab. And you can see if you have this fill button checked that you if it would fill the whole background of all your panels so you would not be able to see any of your MFCDs or any of your, your uh, exports. So you basically you uncheck that box and you come over here to this little uh, button to the right of what, where it says images and you can see that uh, Captain Laws puts a bunch of images from the game in in this uh, location which is your local user my documents Helios images location and you can see he's made a plate here for the background so you just click and highlight that and open it and now it's the, it's the monitor one background is looking at this image and so basically you've got the cutouts for your your um, MFCDs and your gauges and everything like that what's the, what that's going to do is basically lock out and block out any like sun rays that come across the cockpit um, otherwise if you don't have anything there uh, your gauges and switches will still be on top of everything but if you have any gaps between your your gauges and switches uh, when you make a turn into the sunlight or, or you know, away from the sunlight, and the sunlight comes across your gauges in the game. Uh, you'll, you're going to see like some sun rays back behind your, your, the cracks of your gauges. Uh, it's not a big deal for me, so I just leave it blank. Um, now that I have my viewports all set up correctly, I can probably just take a screenshot of that and uh, put the cutouts in the appropriate locations and make a panel. Uh, it's usually e easier to do that once you have all of these things set up. And again, so if you have your monitor set up like this, you can take a quick screenshot, uh, use your favorite photo editing tool, and make a generic panel with uh, the cutout areas in the right locations. Okay, so moving on, uh, talking about layers. Uh, you can make layers uh, hidden or visible by clicking the little eye icon here. Uh, you can lock the layer by uh, clicking on the little lock icon and that prevents any further changes and I believe this uh, icon here is for linking uh, layers to other items so like for example if I have a, a section over here that when I touch this side of my monitor that it um, pops up like let's say the right console and then goes away I could link that here um, so that's all I'm going to talk about with layers in this uh, basic introduction uh, the main thing we need to cover is bindings. So let's get to it. Basically, there's two types of bindings. You've got input and output. And my definition of input is anything that's going to tell Helios items what to do. For example, if the ADI changes in the game, that that information gets input from the game, uh, input into Helios, uh, telling the ADI in Helios to change as well. So the opposite of that is the output. Um, anything that Helios is going to tell what to do. So for example, if I flip a toggle switch in Helios or a real toggle switch in the real world uh, that's assigned through Helios, that is going to output its data to the game and change its position. So let's get started uh, with finding the altimeter. So now these gauges, since they're already set up um, with all their images, the only thing that we need to do is grab input information from the game and tell our uh, gauge in Helios to update appropriately. So we're going to come down here, we're going to highlight the item, and you can see that we don't have any binding information because there's no nothing to output from Helios 
from the ADI, but if we come over here to the input tab, you can see now that I have options that I can bind to the ADI in Helios. And so what we need to grab is input information from an interface from DCS A10C. So we're grabbing game, inf in game in, uh, information and updating our ADI. So we're going to scroll down here to ADI and for uh, we're just going to change the pitch and the bank so I just click and hold and drag it to the appropriate setting here and that's pretty much it that's all you have to do and so now you can see when once you have something assigned it gives you a little uh, down arrow here you can minimize that by clicking on it and then we'll also set the bank so I'll click and hold and drag that to the bank and that's it and so same thing goes for the altimeter so we'll click and highlight the altimeter. You can see I only have an, a couple of options that here that I that it can take input. Uh, so we'll go come over here to our input interfaces DCS A10C altimeter, and we'll just change the altitude. So when the altitude changes in the game, that it reflects the altitude change on our gauge in Helios. And that's pretty much it. So now moving on to toggle switches pretty much the same thing only they're a little bit more involved so we click and highlight the switch um, to see what bindings we can what, what options we have for that switch um, so now what we need to do is when we flip the switch in Helios that we output that data to the game so we're going to come over here to the output and we're going to switch to the interfaces, DCS A10C, and we're going to assign this the uh, battery power switch on the electrical panel. So we'll come down here to the electrical panel. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the battery set, and we've got a couple positions for this switch. So we've got position 1 entered and position 2 entered. Uh, we don't need to set an exit for either of these since it's a, since it's a simple toggle on off switch so what we need to do here is just grab set battery and bring it to position one entered so now you can see over here in the properties area that we have a red warning saying the action value warning value cannot be empty basically that's telling you that this box here is empty and it doesn't have an action value uh, populated in there And you can see here if you read the sentence set electrical battery on DCS AT10C2 it's waiting for uh, a value and so our value options are numeric they're going to be either a number one for power or two which is going to be off or reset so when the switch is in the position one we're going to uh, make that the power and turn it on so now what we're going to do is we're going to take the same set battery option and assign it to position two entered but now instead of uh, position 1 we're going to set it to position 2 and that's it and now we've got now we can tell uh, when we flip the switch in Helios that we flip the switch up that it tells the game to switch its position as well but now you're going to run into a problem when you are in the game and you flip the switch in the game but then you forget to uh, flip it in Helios uh, so the battery switch in the game could be on if you switched it there um, it's not going to reflect here in Helios so what do we need to do we need to grab input information for our switch from our interface from DCS A10C from the electrical panel and so what we need to do is when the battery um, switch changes we need to update that information back to Helios so we're going to set that position so since it's an input we don't need to set a value it's saying that it's, it's going to get a position one or two but we don't need to set it because we're just looking at input information from the game so now one step further now we've got a toggle switch that we want to add a real world toggle switch uh, so in order to do that you do the same steps above um, let's say your switch is already configured like this um, so the next thing that you want to do is go to your joystick controller board panel and now we want to set the battery power switch which I know is button number four 
it's a battery on when it's when it's up and then when it's down it's off so we're going to go to our board and as you can see here we have no bindings that we can set because now we're going to go to our output tab so we're going to output information from our game gear board when we uh, receive a signal we're going to output that and you can see that it sees all my 32 switches and so we're going to bind switch number four you've got button pressed or button released either on or off and we're going to output that information to one of our interfaces interfaces which is DCS A10C and we're going to output that to the electrical panel so I hit the, the drop down for the electrical panel and basically same as before it's the set battery option so I'm going to take set battery and drag it to button 4 pressed and I'm going to assign it value number 1 and then when I release the switch I'm going to set it to value number 2 and that's pretty much it so now what we need to do is uh, let's see here is we need to save our profile and it saves it in your local users my documents Helios profiles location and I'm going to save it as new test profile save so now um, when I flip the toggle switch here it should update the the game as well as the game updating the switch in Helios as we have updated earlier so let's go ahead and test this so I'm going to go ahead and start up my control center and select my appropriate profile here and hit start and you can see my uh, gauges come up and when I flip my tog physical toggle switch up that it updates the switch in Helios and when I flip it down that it goes down. Now one thing is um, since you have a physical toggle switch that may not be electrical when you flip your switch in Helios that it's not going to physically change your toggle switch. Uh, it looked like there was an option to change that in Helios profile editor uh, if you did have a physical toggle switch, uh, let's see here, under the electrical, uh, the release battery option, you can see releases pressure on the current position, allows momentary and electronically held switch to revert to another position if necessary. So if you had an electronically controlled switch, uh, you could use that, I believe, to switch its position. So we've got that. So let's test our, our settings here. I'm just going to do the, uh, let's do air to air. So this way we can check and make sure that all our gauges work and then we can flip the battery power switch on and off. And I'll pause the video until that comes up. Okay, so now that we've got the game loaded, we can hit fly, and you can see our altimeter has changed to the appropriate uh, setting, and let's look watch our ADI as well. So when I, while the aircraft, it's getting input from the game and updating the ADI, as well as the altimeter off to the left up there. And you can see that my, my altitude changes as well. And one last thing, let's just check the, the switch. So when I flip a physical toggle switch in the real world to the down position, you can see that it changes both the switch in Helios and the electrical panel's battery switch as well. And if I flip it back on, it updates both locations. So if I switch just the switch in Helios, it changes the switch position in the game. When I flip it back on, it comes back on. And then if I flip the switch in the game, that it changes the switch in Helios. But again, when you change it here in Helios and in the game, it's not going to change your physical toggle switch. So keep that in mind. Thanks for watching. Let me know if, if you have any comments.